Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and as promised, we're finally going to do a tour of the finished Riviera Hall. Well, it's almost finished. I am having some crash issues lately. Uh, well, the last few days, uh, so whenever I try to fix these fences and, and finish this off on the outside, it's just not really working. So I'm just gonna do it without this being completely finished and we hopefully are able to finish that in a very short time. Uh, so let's go. The Riviera Hall is inspired by the building of the Riviera Hall of Rotterdam Zoo. So if you're curious uh, why I use this type of building and what it is inspired of, definitely go and check it out. Blydorp Rotterdam Zoo, uh, because I'm Dutch and I really love this zoo, so <laughs> makes sense. So let's go inside, because we started this one at like, I don't know, a f in the first four episodes or something, and we're now very far away in the series, so it took quite a long time to finish this off. So we have this beautiful dinosaur museum right over here and we also have these exhibits on both sides. I don't really dare to uh, to unpause the game when I'm walking around so I will do that hopefully when we are at some habitats. But we have a lot of different types of exhibits right over here and we made the window a little bit smaller in this case and we raised the exhibit a little bit higher to get uh, this feeling so also that's why we have these stairs in front of it But I think it looks just really nice and this is also something inspired of the inside area of the Riviera Hall But not everything is inspired of that. There's also a lot of Mimi inspiration for that And the dinosaurs are from the uh, from the workshop. I didn't create those dinosaurs myself uh, So if you want to download them, I will link them in the description down below. They're really really awesome and uh, yeah, they're just a great addition if you want to build a dinosaur museum like we did right over here. So on this side also a lot of different exhibits. And then we go to this particular area. And this is, this was the orangutan habitat. But we now replace it with the chimpanzees. I'm unsure actually. Oh yes, I actually also added this sign on this side. Um, so yeah, we now have the chimpanzee, oh there's a little baby one, in this habitat instead of the orangutans. And next to it we have the gorillas, which I will show in a minute. Let's see if we can unpause the game without having crashes. Hopefully this will go well. And the inside is a little bit also inspired by uh, Brother Namzu. I think this wing mostly is inspired by uh, a lot of pictures of Brother Namzu. We have a whole hallway on that side too, which we will get there in a minute. Uh, but yeah, they have a lot of different climbing frames on the inside. And of course, like a lot of windows for our guest to really enjoy all the animals in here. This is definitely, I'm gonna pause it just for the, for the lag. This is definitely one of my um, projects I'm mostly proud of. I think this looks, just looks really, really beautiful. Also inspired by the original, uh, but still a lot of touches of myself. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with how this has turned out. I think it looks just super amazing. And with like this floor drawing, it looks just really, really cool. So they have this big section right over here with the gorillas for, um, yeah, for the indoor section. It's maybe a little bit too big, but I don't really mind. It's just super cool. And having these fake tires right over here hanging there. Unfortunately, they're not able to use it, but still, it's just super awesome. And they both, of course, also have an outdoor section, which we will get to in a minute. And we also have these uh, areas in front here to make sure that sometimes, you know, when you go to a real life zoo, you see the uh, gorillas or the chimps like super up close next to the window and you really have this up close experience. So I really wanted to have these raised platforms at the other side of the windows to make sure that they would be able to sit there if they want to. All right, let's move on to this uh, hallway right over here. 
also inspired by the real life zoo. Uh, this is the pygmy hippo habitat and they have this underwater viewing gallery uh, right over here. They actually don't really use it in Planet Zoo because they have a really big water section on the outside. So yeah, but obviously you have to imagine like when it's winter and it's like super cold, they will close these gates and they will probably be inside here and then they won't be using it. So yeah, obviously uh, the pygmy hippo will choose its preference too when it can go outside in a bigger pond then it will definitely use that. Um, but yeah, I think it just looks really cool and really in like, yeah, the realistic style and keeping the green from the other habitats. I think it's just really, really awesome. So the next up is the Indian Rhino, uh, which is actually a different rhino in Rotterdam Zoo, but we don't have other rhinos in Planet Zoo. So we just pick the Indian Rhino and they have, I really love how this looks, like, uh, this is also very much inspired by the original, but also with a little bit of me, uh, because we can, of course, and uh, just to make sure that the rhino will back off when you have, when it's like trying to walk here, like we have the electric fence over here, and of course they have this beautiful outdoor section, which I will show right now, let's just go outside, Okay, so we go around here. So this is basically the duplicated from the other side. So there's nothing really different on that side. And this is the gate for the staff towards the rhino habitat. And they have this water section right over here. And uh, yeah, just a not super heavily themed area. Very realistic. And just with some rocks, creating some different elevations. And I think it just looks really, really nice. And yeah, the Indian Rhino loves to uh, have a swim here or a drink. Which just looks really amazing. I really love these guys. They're really, really awesome. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, he's going to turn around. Ah. Okay, let's move on to the Pygmy Hippo Outdoor section. Which is right over here. Um, I'm not really sure, I remember, I'm not really sure if I did this myself or this, is this inspired by one of the Pygmy Hippo habitats. I'm unsure actually, the more I think of it. Uh, I did add a lot of more tropical trees and stuff, but this shape here is definitely inspired by Rotterdam Zoo. If you zoom out and you look at Google Maps, you definitely see this type of shape in here which is just really, really cool. I really love how this has turned out. And on this side, we have the chimpanzee outdoor section. This climbing frame is inspired by a different zoo, but I can't really remember which one it is. You, sh you probably have to look back to the orangutan habitat to know which zoo it was. I can't really remember, but I do remember that I used one of the real life zoos for inspiration of it. So I really do like how, how this is looking. It's a simple climbing frame and I think it would definitely do uh, what, the, what the chimpanzees want they, uh, for their needs, uh, which is just really awesome. And then we go to the gorilla habitat and we have a very cool viewing of Boquito, which is one of the famous males of Rotterdam Zoo, so we call him Boquito, of course. And... Um, yeah, this one is a little bit inspired by the outdoor section, but also with a lot of me. So there are two different islands, if I'm correct. And I wanted to use these, uh, I think they're called cherry blossom trees to create some kind of climbing frames for them. Uh, but it's quite hard for them while well, they don't really use it. But that could also be because of the uh, amount of climbing frames on the indoor section already. So they're climbing... Uh, needs are already fulfilled so they don't really uh, use it that much but I do really just love how this looks with like the bigger logs and the cherry blossom trees this was the first time I used it in this way and I think it just looks super realistic uh, for some reason so I do really really like that and uh, yeah so this side well you probably have seen it tons of times this is definitely my favorite viewing of this whole building i think just looks just super amazing like really really beautiful and uh, yeah i'm just really proud in general of this uh huge 
project we had in uh, in Planet Zoo, in our city zoo. It's, I'm, I'm just super proud of it and I think I am allowed to be proud of it because it took a lot of time, a lot of work. And I think I learned so much from doing this uh, in this zoo. That's just super amazing. So now let's go to the other wing of the Riviera Hall. So let's just go inside right over here again. And then we go to the right side of the wing. So that, okay, uh, moving along. I have no idea, what, what is this? What do we have, a cassowary escaped? You kidding, okay, okay. Well, as you can guess then, this is the Australian wing. This is really more of my own inspiration because the original building, um, has birds in here i think a lot of uh botanical gardens with with aviaries and birds or something like that so um yeah well we don't have birds so we um we we kept it empty for a long while and uh we waited for finishing it in hopes that we would get some birds but unfortunately not and with the australian pack i just really thought like okay let's just uh, go and finish this wing off with the australian pack so we have a restaurant in this area uh, a very small food court, I, I should say. So yeah, this is what is left of the botanical garden, which they had in in the uh, previously. But now they um, they removed the inside and they uh, added this food court uh, with the Australian pack and the Australian theme to it. And uh, yeah, I think this is just a, a nice way to fill up this dome instead right now. And of course, they have some space here to sit down. And then we go to this section and we have the koala indoor section. Now, it was not really my choice to have these uh, glassy walls right over here, but the koalas were able to escape. So, um, yeah, there was just nothing else I could do uh, to make sure that the koalas were not able to escape because you don't want that in your zoo. So with the koala habitat, I went a little bit overboard with um, with the orange red rocks, the desert rocks, and I do really like how this has turned out also on the outside. And first I wanted to do everything the same in this habitat uh, or the Australian habitat. But in the end, I was like, meh, let's, uh, let's not do that. So I did use it a little bit for the cassowary habitat. Uh, but not for the kangaroo and the dingo we still have to make. Uh, I'm not going to use the rat rocks too much because I think it's just going to be too much. So let's move along to uh, this side where we have the cassowary, as I said. A more plain, more barren area on the inside. Still a lot of green, uh, but I kept it like open a lot for the cassowary. And um, uh, on the outside, it is more lush like the cassowary would love. Oh, you're super happy, aren't you? <laughs> um, so yeah, on the outside, it is more lush. And I do, I, I wanted to have this a little bit more barren to you to give the uh, variation in here with the uh, habitat. So let's go outside. We can also go outside on this side right over here. And then we move all around right over here. We have a kangaroo habitat over there. And as you can see, we have a very, very lush habitat for the cassowaries, but still enough room for them to move around. And yes, there are four cassowaries in here, but I do know that the cassowary is a very uh, more lonely animal. So it, it should only have one or just a male and a female in one habitat. But I know that, but I just wanted to make sure for my shots that it had some more cassowaries in to see them walking around. So that's the only reason why I added a few more in. Uh, but I can obviously fix that real quickly. So yeah, very, very uh, beautiful and lush habitat for the, uh, for the cassowary. And uh, I think it just looks great. And we have this, this little overflow here of the uh, orange rocks going outside but not as heavily as the outdoor section for the koalas in here because here I really use it a lot but the good thing is that you can't barely tell when you look from above in the zoo because uh, well it's pretty much hidden it's it's pretty dense in here with a lot of trees so it does not really matter too much it's not like a super weird orange habitat in between the rest here so I think this looks just really, really nice and uh, 
awesome for the uh, wait what do i hear in the water awesome for the koalas oh can koalas swim now i can't remember that they could really huh interesting i can't remember that they were able to go into the water that's really interesting actually anyways uh, this is the last habitat for the uh, for the Riviera Hall, and, and let me just g give you a peek from the top. You see a little bit of orange, but it's definitely pretty much hidden away. And uh, I think it just looks super amazing to have this type of building in our zoo. It's definitely a huge main feature right over here. And uh, together with the uh, Predator building, also from Rotterdam Zoo, and then we also, uh, we will have the twin building too, uh, which is also a famous building from Rotterdam Zoo. And it should all be in one line going through here. And then we will have the twin buildings right over here. And actually we should also have some kind of platform here right in this line. And then it's like complete what we used from Rotterdam Zoo. But obviously not the whole zoo is inspired of it. We have a lot of other things and projects like the entrance is from Leipzig Zoo. We use more of Leipzig Zoo here. We did use this one from Rotterdam Zoo. Also a lot of uh, own inspiration and uh, uh, own creativity. But overall, I'm just really, really happy how the zoo is coming along. We're going to have the dingo habitat right over here. And I think the African area is going to start uh, probably over here on this side. And then we have the Asian area right over here. We have the South America Dome, which is also a tour of on the channel if you want to see it. And we have the land of the cold area, which we also still need to finish with probably the Japanese macaque still adding. And um, maybe the Siberian tiger. But yeah, we still have a lot to do. But especially this section right over here is coming along super nicely. So I'm just really, really happy with that so please do let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this whole riviera hall build leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already and i really just hope to see you guys all in the next one thank you guys so much for watching bye guys